Postrana the Christian consciousness movement throughout the world he established so many temples and brought so many devotees to the people of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he trained them to some extent. But certainly uh, there was much more guidance required, much more training required, and much more deep explanation of the Vaishnava Siddhanta, of which our charters have written dozens and hundreds of books. So now, in the current day, by the transcendental will of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, our beloved Sri Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, our master, we should try to control some, some ego bodies that uh, I cannot understand what I see in this picture. So I certainly have some fight for the object is not so much ego. Coincidentally, there are some system. There's no problem. Now they will just. <clears throat> so now this. Contribution, special contribution, which our new day is giving, is to reveal to the world these most important literatures, which have been written by our previous charges, and which our Sri Prabhupada did not have time to translate. So he has taken it upon himself to arduously spend many, many hours and years translating these literatures for the benefit of all the Vaishnavas of the present time and all Vaishnavas to come for generations and hundreds of years that they will be able to know what is Gauravani Prachayana, which our Sri Prabhupada came to the Western world to live. Therefore, he is revealing the message of the Guru Guru Acharyas, Arati Prabhupada,
and that one and this not saying tree of brand no 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 but fruit no no what was it? the Please help the management. Who is expert in sound system? 
system to develop a sound system and everyone can listen to it carefully. The sound system is not good, too much ego and everyone can not listen properly. So who is the expert in sound system to start and have the management to develop a sound system and a system? I also request the manager. That's why we know the director of the art.
सोचे वी शुड ट्राई टू गिव प्रॉपर ऑनर टू सी वी आर डिवोटेड स्पेशली टू दिस इस एपल सर श्री भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज बट अवर गुरु इज नॉट टू बी फॉर देर आर सो मेनी सीनियर बट नो वन इज टेल दैन टू कम and from tomorrow senior devotees among males and females go blessed be the sister and given place for from tomorrow you should go and the bounty is in second chairs please don't sit in front of those who are trying to you can sit in chair but a little bit behind Yeah, but there. Okay, okay. So senior lady devotees, they can also come forward. Or Ashta Shakti and then so many are. I'm not sure. You can come, I'm not sure you can come. Which is you can come? Oh, yeah. <laughs> From tomorrow, you should sit for sit. You can sit forward, red cloth. Yes, you can come here today. Are you not sitting in front? Festival part is going on. 
only two days before that had that the cover millions of millions of millions people of all whole world were gathered is still going on perhaps tomorrow will be the happening soon And after that, again, return festival will come. So many things will be there and going on. Mali Krishna and his associates, his associates and his incarnations, they come to this earth with a purpose. And that purpose is that how less merciful they are, they descend only to attract people. How they can cross the river of endless pain and death and so called festival is there. I want to tell something before that. We will very soon we will discuss about the Rath Jatra festival. But everything begins from Sraddha, Nishtha, Ruchi. Like Rupsana, Rupa Goswami has written, Adav Sraddha, Tata, Sadhusana. But I think that he has not told first Sadhusan. Sadhusan the first. Bhakti Janamur has Sadhusan. Krishna Bhakti Janamur. What is the meaning? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Srila Sanatana Goswami Bhai. Krishna Bhakti Janamur. The root cause of the awakening of Krishna Bhakti is the association of the pure Vaishnava. But why is Goswami told like that? Adav Sadha? Why is it? Can you? Why is it? Sri Rupa Goswami Bhakti has explained Adav Sadha Tata Sadhu Sangha. In the beginning there is Sadha. And then after that, one gets Sadhu Sangha. But actually, we should know that on the basis of Sukriti, good fortune, one first has the chance to meet with a Sadhu and hear Harikata from him. But in the first stage, we have no proper understanding of who is a Sadhu or how to associate. But by that association, then faith is awakened in the heart. Then, after when we associate with the Sadhu, with very strong faith, with a great uh, deliberate intention of attaining pure bhakti by that association, then that state has been called by Sri Rupa Goswami Pad, Sadhu Sangha, in the verse Ado Shadha Tata Sadhu Sangha. You understand now? That will told correct. What he told? Again we are. What is the question? He is replying to the question that how is it that Sri Rupa Goswami, he has stated Adol Shraddha, that there is Shraddha, but how will one get Shraddha? This is the point. That he said Adol, but this Adol means that in the beginning one would have had to get Sadhu Sangha. How one will get Sadhu Sangha? That is explained. Bhakti is to Bhagavad Bhakti Sangayana Parijayate. Sat Sangha Prabhupada will be in Supriti Buddha Sanchatai. That one who has accumulated Supriti, Bhakti Supriti, heaps and heaps of Bhakti Supriti through many, many lifetimes, then by the death of the Supriti, they will come in contact with Sadhu. Such Sadhus, 
So we have many times he's explained that there are those um, Mahababat, um, first category, second category, and third category. And also, Justin Bajo, when he was discussing Mahatsambo, it was also explained that those who are Madhu Madhikari, but who have achieved at least Ruchi, Asakti, that they can be in this category of Sadhu. That from them, Paramatic Shraddha, transcendental faith, is coming. And one who associates with them, then this transcendental faith will be inculcated within their hearts. This is Ado. By this association, Ado, then will come this Paramatic Shraddha, at least some um, minute aspect of it, which will begin one's path. Any question? He had told that you could not carefully have here. Is the question is the question is if we see only the sadhu, is that association or is there something deeper in the Sadhu is not all only for Raman can come and he can take the dandasan the sannyas. And nowadays in this guise or thousands and billions of sadhu in the form uh, of sadhu Raman is touring here and there, moving around. It may be there when there may be um, so many Raman beings within us also who are attracting Sita in this guise and try to, to kidnap her. There may be so in the form of sadhu they have come. But you should know Ram and Lakshman are here. They are so dear. So, Adho Shantha. In first chance, Common people, general people, they don't know who is sadhu and who is asadhu. They don't know. Only outer sentence shows that he is sadhu or he is not a sadhu. It depends on that. Because they don't know. But that person sadhu, without any reason, without any Anything, he comes to the door of the hasta. Oh, can you give me one glass of water? He is not thirsty. Even. Oh, can you give, can you give me a sandal? Or like that. And he makes some sukriti. And in the coach, exchange, he gives some thoughts. What is the aim and object of our life? And gradually, though the general people have no deep thought, but by any Mahabharata history, or a story, or Srimad Bhagavata story, they give some knowledge of it. And they tell who is really Shadu, who is not really Shadu. Then, by this association, the common people, general people, they come in a platform that they have some real transcendental sattva. 
if they are not serving, no obeying higher classes of sadhu, they cannot do anything by here. Only hearing will not do. Like in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, it has been told. Tattvindi Pranipa Seva is rest among them. Tattvindi Pranipa Pariprasna and Seva. If you are not doing Seva, not obeying him, no strong belief on the thing, you cannot do Seva. And there is a standard of Association. Association. Very huh? steady. So, first Sattha comes, and what Sattha comes? Krishna Bhakti Kaidesha Bhakti Bhakti. If I will chant, remember, meditate to Krishna. My life will be successful, nothing to do. Nothing to collect, nothing to maintain, nothing. This life has given by Krishna according to the level that in past days what we have done. Understand? So, if you will not do anything, even your maintenance is bound to be go. What I do? What I do? <laughs> Try to come some more early. When I am again, then as if I am sitting here to welcome them. <laughs> they should come first before me and welcome me. Not that I will have welcome with so many people. So, oh, Maharaj is coming. <laughs> Be careful. Patmana Maharaj, Ashram Maharaj are coming. This is the definition of actual shraddha. If someone has shraddha, then they will have a very firm conviction and belief, complete, absolute belief, that if I serve Krishna, Krishna bhakti koile, if I perform Krishna bhakti to Krishna, then sarva karma pritahoy, all other activities for my maintenance or any other duties that there are in life, they will automatically be taken care of. Srila Gurudev is also explaining that this life that we've received now is the result of our activities in previous life. Uh, so whatever is coming to us by our pious activities in the form of so many uh, material good fortune and happiness, it's bound to come. It will automatically come no matter what we do. And similarly, our suffering is the same. So someone who has true shraddha, he understands that actually his foremost duty and his only duty in life is to perform pure bhakti to Krishna in this human form of life and attain perfection. And all of the other activities that he requires to do for his maintenance, etc., they'll be taken care of and automatically he will get the results of his previous life's activities. So real shraddha, real firm belief means that one believes I only have this one duty in life and that is to serve Krishna. And maintenance is bound to come. Nothing to burden, nothing to suffer. Like birds, like a ant, like python, 
that do not be. But light is maintained. But uh, we think that, oh, I am so active. I am doing business. I am serving. And thus money is coming and maintained. It is, it is quite false. Don't believe in this theory. Believe in this theory that Krishna has given this form, human form, and He has written that all your whole life will be in such a way. Suffering may come, happiness may come, but your life is will be maintained. Anyhow, if you are sitting here, someone will, will come. Oh, why you are hungry? Oh, Krishna will himself come. You know, in his thing. Oh, in his thing. So, you should try to do Krishna Bhakti. Nothing else. And you will see that now you have enough time we know Ramayana, we know Mahabharata, we know Purans. Why that they wrote Srimad Bhagavatam, Gita, Puran and all other things? Oh, for us. But we are unfortunate, we are not taking it. So we must have a strong faith on Epics, Smat Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Ramayana. Ramayana also, Palmiki is not less, he is also a player. Chaitanya Chaitanya, Chaitanya Bhagavat. The books of Rupa Goswami are not less important than the Aspera. In some cases they are more better, superior. So try to have a form that in this human form I have only one aim and object of our life. And what is that? To practice Bhakti. Now I want to give some explanation of the Radh Jatra. I'm very brief. How it came? It seems that Krishna went to son of Eucalyptus. That is in Kutchetra. Radhika and all others went there. Also there is some history near Prabhupada. Here and there. So, we have explained so many times. So, I request Shamrani in brief the explanation or account of Ratsa Jaya. First, first second. First second, you know all. In brief, forgive my. How they came from Dwarka to Mathura with Govinda Maharaj, Gaur Govinda Maharaj and Nya Maharaj. Very interesting. Oh my God, I'm going to go see you again. I'm going to 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 see you again. Shri Gurudev ordered me to speak what he generally calls the third history of how Lord Jagannath appeared. Just as the inhabitants of Vrindavan and particularly the gopis feel so much separation from Krishna and come sometimes faint and sometimes to the point of leaving their bodies, so Krishna also feels like that in Dwarka. Once he was unconscious for a few days and his associates, like Baladev, Udav, Narada, and others, were discussing how they could bring him back to consciousness. So first they thought that Narada should simply play on his vena 
Narmuni Bajayi Naradi Karaman and Ame. And then Krishna would wake up. And then Narada said, But if I do that, then Krishna will immediately run to Vrindavan, play with his friends and the gopis, and will never see him again. So they devised, or thought they were devising another plan that Uddhav should first go to Vrindavan and tell all the inhabitants of Vrindavan that don't worry, Krishna is coming back. But he would have said, if I go there, they'll say, oh, that liar and cheater is coming again. Because I was there before, some months after Krishna departed from there, and I promised that I would bring Krishna back, and he never came back. So they wouldn't believe me. Then they suggested that Baladev should go. And Baladev said, the same thing will happen to me. Uddha said, especially Mother Yasoda will think that liar has come back. And Baladev said, if I go, the same thing will happen. When I came back to Dwarka, after promising the residents of Vrindavan that Krishna will return shortly, I begged him to come, and he promised me he would come. But I don't know what happened to him. He used to be very soft-hearted and merciful when he was in Vrindavan. But after he arrived in Mathura and Dwarka, his heart became like stone. So I couldn't convince him, I won't go. Then Subhadra was overhearing their discussion, and she said, oh, I'll go. I'll go to Vrindavan and jump on the lap of Mother Yasoda and caress her and tell her, your son is coming very soon. Don't worry, you can welcome him. Then I'll go door to door to the house of the gopis, and I'll tell them all, decorate and get ready to welcome Krishna. No, believe me. So when Baladev heard that, he said, if my sister and brother are going, certainly I must go. I cannot live without my brother. And I miss my mother and father so grievously, I want to see them again. So we'll all three go. So there was a chariot ready for Sumadra, then a chariot ready for Baladev, and Daruka personally came to be Krishna's chariot driver. As Krishna was going to the chariot, just like we see in the Rathayatra festival, when Jagannath tilts forward, tilts back, and to the two sides, and the very strong wrestler Dietus have to keep him up by very strong ropes. And as he's standing on the, on the pillows, and the pillows break and all the cotton comes out, as he's walking from one cotton pillow to another, similarly, this all started when Krishna was going to his chariot to go to Vrindavan. When Krishna first woke up, he thought, oh, I'm in Vrindavan. Uddhav, what are you doing here in Vrindavan? So then Uddhav said, no, this isn't Vrindavan, this is Dwarka. And Krishna became like a mad person, forgetting that Uddhav was there, Baladev, Narada, forgetting everybody in Dwarka, and just running around in the room thinking, oh, the gopis have stolen my flute. Ah, maybe it was Radhika, or it was Lalita, or Vishaka. And he began searching the invisible gopis, like a mad person. So they said, well, we're going to send you to Vrindavan right now. So Krishna was fainting in different directions as they were taking him to the chariot, just like the Rathayatra festival. This is the origin of Rathayatra. Finally, they, they got him on his chariot, and Daruga went very, very speedy to Vrindavan. Another thing Subhadra told everybody in Morka that I'm going to tell them in Vrindavan, is that Krishna is coming with me. It's not that I'm making a promise. Krishna and Baladev are with me. Krishna may be held up a few moments, a few hours, a couple of days, because on his way, so many rich people and so many kings and princes may be offering him prayers and gifts. So he'll be a little bit held up and he's coming right away. So the three of them came in their chariots to Vrindavan. And as soon as Krishna arrived, he was told by a messenger that Srimati Rani is just about to leave her body. She's on the verge of death, and in the very next moment, she will certainly leave her body. And at the same time, the gopis like Lalita and Vishaka were putting cotton under her nostrils to see if she was still alive. And there was hardly any life there. And all the residents of Vrindavan were convinced, now this is definitely the time that Srimati Rani is leaving. And they were all grievously lamenting and mourning. Even Chandravati, though generally a rival of Srimati Radhika, came to offer her condolences and speak compassionately. So, just then, Krishna arrived, and he saw Radharani in that state of unconsciousness, and 
and he began to weep like a baby uncontrollably. And as he was weeping and his heart was melting and he was dying inside seeing her, his face began melting, his legs, his arms, everything began melting and he assumed the form of Lord Jagannath. Then he was so much mournful and feeling separation from Radharani who was right there that he began rolling on the ground in the form of Lord Jagannath. And Baladeva and Subhadra seeing him, they also became intolerant of seeing his suffering and so they became ecstatic suffering. And so they became also like that. In the meantime, the Shakya and Lalita were whispering in Radharani's ear, your beloved Krishna is here, he's standing right before you, you can wake up now. So Radharani immediately came to external consciousness, but then she saw Krishna weeping and rolling in the form of Lord Jagannath. So she said, we must save Krishna, whisper this very special mantra in Krishna's ear. Now what was that mantra? Radhe 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 Jagannath Sri Radhe. So hearing that very magical mantra of his very life and soul, Krishna came back to consciousness and assumed his natural normal form as Krishna and so did Baladur and Subhadra and then the loving exchange and the paragraphs and years of conversation that Krishna and Radharani had in their now unlimitedly increased love cannot be described, although it can be realized in the hearts of personalities like Sri Gurdu. Then Narada appeared on the spot and he said, I would like a benediction. Krishna said, what is that benediction? So Naraji said, I pray that in these three forms that you melted in the love of the gopis and particularly in the love of Srimadhi Radhika, these three forms should be somewhere in the world and that became Yalachala, Jagannath Puri, so that everybody can begin worshipping you, starting with Jagannath Swami and Ayana Patagani and pulling the hearts and end up by Sarasanga finding out about the supremacy of the love of the gopis and your subordination to them and particularly to Sri Mati Radhika so that ultimately people of the world can come to the service of Sri Mati Radhika. So Lord Krishna said to trust you, let it be, let it be, so be it. And after those three months, 
whether you find Neil Monaco or not. Oh, the reason he had to ask was that night the pilgrims were there in his courtyard. But when he went to find out where is that Neil Monaco, they had already gone. So now he lamented and already felt separation. One of the ministers or his associates who he sent on this search is the son of his priest, and his name is Vidyapati. He was very handsome, very young, and very intelligent. And the king promised, whoever of you find me a Madhava, I'll give you a portion of my kingdom. I'm so eager. So he went towards the east, and after walking and walking for many weeks, he came to one village. And he was evening time, and he required some place to rest. So he asked the uh, residents there, and they told him there is one Sabra, which is a low, lower caste person, but he's very religious, very humble, very intelligent, and he always hosts pilgrims. He's a very excellent host, and most people go to his house. So Vidyapati went to his house, and he wasn't home at that moment. His beautiful young daughter, Lalita, was home. And she said, just stay a moment, and my father will come home soon. So his father came home with a very excellent fragrance on his body, very outstanding, unique fragrance. And Vidyapri was overwhelmed by that fragrance. So um, the Sabara, the father, whose name was Visvavasu, he instructed his daughter, please give everything to this Brahmana. Give, help him with his baby, with his prashana, with everything that he requires. So she began serving them, and the nature of a young girl, beautiful girl, serving a young, beautiful man is that they became attracted to each other and fell in love. Though Vijayapati already had a Brahmin wife back home in Avantipur, still he fell in love with Lalita. And she requested her father that they be married, and her father very easily agreed. Now they're husband and wife. So one day, Vijayapati asked his wife Lalita, Lalita, now, my dear, affectionate, loving wife, you are my half. So I have one request to make from you. I want to know where your father goes every day. And he comes back with this wonderful fragrance. She said, I can't tell you. And he became very disturbed and upset. You're my half and you can't tell me? And then he became silent. So she was grief stricken that she couldn't please her husband. She said, I promise not to tell, but I must tell you because you're my husband. He goes to see one deity. Oh, what is the name of that deity? Neil Mano. So we cannot imagine how Vidyapati was overjoyed. So he asked her, please arrange and ask your father if he'll take me. So Lalita sat on the lap of her father and very sweetly and politely said, my husband would like to go with you to see Neil Mano. And instantly he became petrified of separation. That if somebody knows, somehow or other, I just feel that I'm going to be separated from my Lord. So he was bewildered. Should I tell her? Should I not tell her? And seeing his hesitancy, she said, If you don't tell me, then I'll take poison and die. So believing her and thinking, I'll lose my only beloved daughter. This is, as our prophet used to say, the last uh, weapon of the lady. So he said, okay, I'll take him, but there's a condition. He'll have to be blindfolded with a black cloth around his eyes. And she was agreeable, her husband was agreeable. The next day, the husband sat with his father in the the cart. And she's very intelligent, Lolita, as her father, so she is. So she very stealthily whispered to her husband, here, take these. These are mustard seeds and they will grow very beautiful yellow flowers. So you should grow them here and there on the road as you're going. And very soon these flowers will grow and create a road. And then you'll be able to find Neil Monica yourself later without having to go with my father. So the husband was very happy. But this bus was also very intelligent. So he didn't drive on any straight path but he went in a very zigzag way. Because when one is blindfolded or blind, then his other senses are more receptive. So in order that his other senses wouldn't realize, he took a very zigzag path. 
And finally they reached the hill of Nirmada. And Mr. Vasu told his son-in-law, just wait here, I'm going to get paraphernalia for worship and I'll be back soon. In the meantime, he was sitting there outside the temple and he saw one tree uh, with the branches leaning over the lake. And he saw a crow sitting on the branch. And this crow, just accidentally, maybe he was sleeping, fell off the branch, fell into the lake, and came out with four hands. And Garuda came together and flew him off to Vaikuntha. So the Japanese thought, well, this crow eats animals and eats stool without any discrimination he's eating. He's such a low bird. And he went to Vaikuntha. If I jump into that lake, I'll also go to Vaikuntha. So he just began to climb the tree when all of a sudden there was an aerial voice, a voice from the sky. Don't do it. Don't commit suicide. I have very big plans for you. And all arrangements will be made. And just after that, the, Mr. Vasu came back and he said, come on, come on. He didn't realize what he was doing. Come on, let's go to the temple. So he went to the temple and finally, after so many months, he was able to see the old and his heart was totally overjoyed at the beauty of the deity. And he saw the worship by his father-in-law, the singing, the um, worship, the paraphernalia being offered. And then again, his blindfold was put on, and again they went back in a zigzag way back to his home. On the way, Viswavasu heard an aerial voice, which said, Oh Viswavasu, you've served me for so long, and now I want to be served by King Ingridumna who Vidyapati is represented. So he immediately became petrified. And as soon as I got home, he locked Vidyapati up in a room as though he was in jail. So Vidyapati had to get back to his king. So he begged his wife, you're my hand, you're my dearly beloved wife, please help me escape, and I'll get back here as soon as possible. So she did that, and after walking for weeks, he got back to King Indraduna and told him everything that happened. Now King Indraduna, was so happy, he took his wife, he took all of his ministers, his army, and they went to that village. But by the arrangement of the Lord, that whole village was covered with sand. No village, only sand. No hill, only sand. Naturally, no mustard seeds, only sand. And no temple, only sand. So the king was overwhelmed with grief. He decided he would fast until death. So he sat down. And then that same aerial voice came to him. And he said, don't be disturbed. I will come to you, but not in the form of Neil Madhav. I will come to you in three forms. Jagannath, four. Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, and Sudarshan Chakra. I will come as a log. And uh, you will take that log and make that log, which is replete with Chakra and Gada and Padma all these signs of Vishnu, and you will make my deities. But first, Brahma will come, and he will take you to Vaikuntha, and there you'll be able to see me personally. So, Brahma immediately came, they went to Vaikuntha, and there he saw Neil Madhav in his Vishnu form, speaking with his associates, and he was so pleased, unlimitedly happy. And then the Lord himself told the king the same thing that the aerial voice told. Then he went back, and he was already had arranged a temple to be built. But now, you know, the time level in Vaikuntha is a lot different from the earth. So now so many millions of years have passed. And when he got back, everybody had already died practically from his kingdom. By the arrangement of the Lord, his wife was there. But practically everyone else was gone. And that temple that he had built, there was a new king, naturally. A new king was in charge of the temple. So he went to the king and told him, no, this is my temple, I built it so many millions of years ago, but he didn't believe him. So Brahma came as a witness, and there was also one Burkro named Kakabusha, and he confirmed that I've, I've lived a long time, and I know that this is the actual king. So the new king turned the temple over to the old king, that is the real king, Hindu Maharaj, and then uh, the law came in, but he couldn't move the log. All of his elephants, all of his army, couldn't move the log. And they found that log at uh, Chakra Tirtha. So, an aerial voice came again, and that aerial voice said, you won't be able to take me out. But my great devotees, Viswavasu, 
Lalita and Vidyapati, they'll be able to take me out. Somehow or other they remain despite the fact that the village was covered by sand. So go and find them, bring them in a royal procession on a chariot, bring them to the spot. So the king arranged for that, then they came, they went in the water, chanting Jai Neil Madhu, Jai Neil Madhu, Jai Jagannath, Jai Balagay, Jai Subhadra, and instantly the law came out. The law was put on a chariot, brought in a royal procession to the temple, and then the king made an announcement. I would like all the carpenters of Arisa to come and make these deities that the Lord said should come from this law. So, so many, and I will give you a portion of my kingdom to anyone who can do it. So, so many carpenters came, came and as soon as their tools touched the log, immediately they broke. The log was too hard for them. So, there was one old and very beautiful Brahman. He said, my name is Maharana, and I can do it. But, I have a condition. It will take 21 days to carve these deities, and you shouldn't disturb me at all. So the king agreed, and now 14 days passed. And you know, ladies have a very soft heart. So the queen of the king said, My dear husband, this Brahmana hasn't eaten anything, I'm sure, for 14 days. And I haven't heard any sounds for 14 days. Maybe he's dead. If he dies, then we'll be, Brahma Hachi will be guilty of the sin of killing the Brahmana. The responsibility will go on our head. So the minister told him, no, I think there's some special, mm, special mystical arrangement here. But she kept us insisting, so finally the king arranged to have the doors pushed open. And Shavurde tells the story in different years and a little bit different ways, I guess according to how it happened in different years. One time the Brahmana was there and he smiled and said, oh, I couldn't finish the deities because you came and disturbed me. And then he disappeared. And another time, there was no Brahmana, but just the deities. But on any occasion, the king realized that this was not any carpenter that carved that this form. This was actually Jagannath himself. So then, as an error of voice, Lord Jagannath instructed the king exactly how to have the Rathiyatra festival. It's not invented by anybody, this festival. It's actually dictated by the Lord. There'll be the uh, Snana Yatra, there'll be the Chandan Yatra, there'll be a 10 day Ratha Yatra, we'll go to Gunjita. The temple was named after the queen because the queen was so instrumental in bringing the Lord. Then the king requested Lord Jagannath, please don't let me have any children. Why? Because if I have any children and they have their children, then our descendants will think that this is my temple and I should get all the pranami like it's going on not only in India but in the West. So the king, so Lord Jagannath agreed and then he smiled. And why he smiled was because he knew that in Krishna's pastimes, in this third history and also in the second history which you haven't heard yet, in Dwarka, another way that Lord Jagannath appeared, again Krishna told Narada, yes I will appear. And that's why Jaina smiled to the king. We go pray with him in the middle
जा रहा मांगो 